chat gbt and dyspraxia let's talk about it so let's start off with john john has dyspraxia he has recently been diagnosed by an educational psychologist now john is talented he likes charles darwin salvador dali etc but he is really really struggling maybe just maybe chat gbt can help so how can chat gbt a widely used artificial intelligence tool assist someone with dyspraxia as a person like myself who is diagnosed with dyspraxia i have that first line experience of the challenges it poses and i believe technology holds great potential for assistance so let's embark on this exploration together and let's uncover the relationship between dyspraxia and ChatGPT. Alternatively, we can also use the term dyspraxia and AI. So the first logical question is, what is ChatGPT? Now ChatGPT is making waves. It's making waves across the digital landscape, transforming how we approach tasks by providing a fast, a very fast and efficient means of obtaining information. Now at its core, ChatGPT is a sophisticated, a sophisticated language model designed to stimulate human-like interactions by answering questions. It does this facilitating a dynamic conversational flow. Now the philosopher Socrates may have absolutely loved ChatGPT as being someone who developed the term Socratic questioning, but I digress. So I believe there is a potential healthy relationship between dyspraxia and artificial intelligence. So now let's do an inquiry into dyspraxia using ChatGBT and we're gonna do this by getting back to John. So John, he goes onto his laptop, opens up ChatGBT and enters the following, seven positive rules of dyspraxia and limit it to 200 words. Okay, so we're gonna document this response in whiteboard animation. So here are the seven rules that ChatGBT came up with. Number one, organization is key. Use planners, apps, or to-do lists to keep track of tasks and appointments. Number two, embrace technology, tools like text-to-speech software or organizational apps. Number three, physical activity, engage in regular tailored exercise that improves both gross and fine motor skills. Number four, seek support, regular sessions with occupational therapists, speech therapists, and other specialists are crucial. Number five, educate others, inform teachers, employers, and peers about dyspraxia. Number six, have patience with progress, set realistic goals, and celebrate small achievements. And finally, number seven, community connection. Join support groups or online forums where experiences and strategies are shared. So I hope you enjoyed the animation sequence. Now adopting these rules can help individuals with dyspraxia and this can lead to more structured and fulfilling lives turning challenges into opportunities for growth and resistance. So that means John, he can take this information, adapt what's helpful and disregard what's unhelpful. So for me, this is what's good about this response. It's super fast response in under a minute. It's a comprehensive response and the ability to condense the answers to 200 words forces it to be concise. The answers are beneficial and relevant to the question. And after this exercise, the most logical conclusion is that this is a great tool to utilize. And here's something else to think about. Where else could John, where else could John get this information in such a quick time. There are some points to make here. Understanding dyspraxia is key as it affects not just motor skills but also memory and organization as well as other things. So ChatGPT can be a significant aid in these areas. For instance, if I forget the strategies for speed reading, ChatGPT can quickly find that information enhancing productivity and learning efficiency. For someone with dyspraxia, ChatGPT can act as an invaluable resource tool, helping to compile information, whether it's for academic purposes, putting assignments together, script writing for YouTube, or general knowledge enhancement.
So a question could be, are there broader implications and safety considerations? So in other words, we can see the positive sides of ChatGBT, but are there some negative ones? So while there are concerns about AI's impact, particularly on employment, I guess it's crucial to distinguish between general AI application and specific tools like ChatGBT. So my focus is on the practical benefits and how these technologies can support people with dyspraxia and neurodiverse conditions. So this is all positive, but there is a good question about will artificial intelligence, will AI, will ChatGBT affect the job market? Because ChatGBT and similar AI technologies have the potential to significantly impact the job economy. How? How can they do this? They can do this by automating tasks that previously required human intervention, thereby reshaping the demand for certain skills and certain roles. Now, as AI systems become increasingly capable of handling complex tasks, such as customer inquiries, content creation, and even some aspects of coding and data analysis, they can enhance, they can enhance productivity and efficiency in numerous industries. Now, this shift may lead to a reduction, yes, a reduction in jobs that are routine and repetitive, and this can push the workforce to adapt by acquiring new skills that are less susceptible to automation. So let's try and paint a picture of some clear examples. So in your local supermarket, you can be served by a human or by a machine. And here's a question. Does this limit jobs within that supermarket? Now, of course, this can limit the workforce. But remember, the machine is programmed by humans. So perhaps there are additional jobs in that particular industry. Also, the machine would be provided by a company with employees. So yes, technology can decrease jobs, but it can increase jobs in other markets. So this leads to the concept of artificial intelligence and entrepreneurship, because there is an opportunity for humans to collaborate with AI to create better businesses. Typically, this would involve the human collaborating with the AI system to bring a better service, of course. I constantly get internet ads selling AI services. So this may become a saturated market, but there is a theoretical opportunity. I guess there is a valid question though, how long will it last? And clearly entrepreneurs need to think on their feet and be more creative and solution focused to enable this collaboration with them and AI to flourish because the business of yesterday is not the business of today. Now maybe AI may provide John not just the opportunity to learn quicker with his dyspraxia, but maybe there is an opportunity for entrepreneurship with that collaboration if he masters this function. Because I believe that neurodiverse people may be more suited to entrepreneurship, but that's another video. In conclusion, ChatGBT can help people with dyspraxia. It can shorten learning time and it can be in an accessible tool. Of course, there may be issues with artificial intelligence, but to me, there are choices. The first choice is to ignore artificial intelligence because of fear. And the second choice as a dyspraxic person is to use ChatGBT as a way to learn more effectively. So I hope you've enjoyed the content. Now, if you want to support the channel, like and subscribe. Also, why not check out my video playlist on video essays.